Hi everyone, my name is Hilary Petit. I am the Program Specialist Manager at All Memphis. So I work directly with our Program Specialists who give teachers really quality feedback so that students can be the very best that they can be when it comes to reading proficiently. I'm gonna give you some really hands-on activities today that you can use with your children at home to help promote that foundational literacy concept that I'm mentioning here. All Memphis is grounded in the idea of a fully literate community. We truly believe that in order to foster opportunities for the historically excluded students, um, that they should be able to access literacy and the freedoms it can provide by empowering teachers with training and mentorship in foundational reading. We find it so important that all of this starts with quality teachers. And so we're working to teach teachers, but there are lots of activities that you can do at home that help promote this idea of a fully literate community. All Memphis is a phonics-based curriculum. It's grounded in the principles of Orton-Gillingham. It's the gold standard when it comes to um, early education and intervention in the phonics world. It's multi-sensory, so lots of good movements, structured, sequential, cumulative. It's quite flexible, and there's lots of language opportunities for students to engage um, with teachers and even with you at home. We provide a teacher mentorship, so that we're working directly with teachers, and this can be adopted both whole group and small group. The great thing about All Memphis is that the curriculum does not make assumptions about what students know. Instead, we really take time to look at what the data says and what students actually need in order to best, uh, best support those students who are struggling when it comes to reading. We have a great team. Um, I'm honored to work with some of the greatest minds, I think, in, in foundational literacy. Um, wanted to point out one, Dr. Krista Johnson. She is our executive director and co-founder of All Memphis. I taught All Memphis when I was in the classroom. So I'm a former teacher, was able to really teach this curriculum to Fidelity and had her coach me on it. So I had um, the, the big dog working with me on the curriculum, but I'm honored to work with such incredible um, people who work really hard at what they do and are incredibly passionate. I want to set the stage before we really kind of get into what we're going to talk about. What is sometimes staggering and shocking is some of the data that comes out that says, um, specifically for this one, 78.6% of third graders in Shelby County schools read below grade level. That can be uh, quite devastating when we think about what that impact actually means. But we're going to really think about how as teachers, how as individuals, how as parents, can we best support students to make sure that they're getting the most? And then, you know, what, what we also like to see and what we say is that third grade is the strongest predictor of long-term reading success. When you are a strong reader in third grade, we're going to see a lot more improvement and a lot more opportunities provided to you because you have the access to the code to read. One in six children who is not reading proficiently in the third grade does not graduate from high school on time, a rate four times that greater than proficient readers. So that then means that only one out of five third through fifth graders are reading on grade level. While again, that can be really heavy and daunting and disappointing, it also really encourages me that the work that we are doing and the work that we are continuing to do is incredibly important and your children matter. And I think that, you know, all Memphis really believes that too. So at home, I know you're sitting in front of your computer or on your phone, and I want you to kind of think to yourself, what do you usually do at home to support your child's literacy? I'm sure you probably immediately have some things that come to mind that you work on at home, which is great. And there are lots of activities that you can use to really promote this foundational literacy aspect. Children who read at home are uh, at least three or at least three times a week by family members are almost twice as likely to score in the top 25% reading compared to children who are, re who are read to less than three times a week. I think that Kimberly just described it so well during her presentation, the amount of time that it uh, takes for you to just engage with your child is a great opportunity to build some language and understanding around foundational literacy. At All Memphis, we use um, some things called card decks. And these card decks, uh, you've heard Johnny kind of talk about briefly. These are ways that we get students to name letters, the sounds that they make, keyword, and again, those sounds. So they're naming letter names, they're naming keywords, and they're naming sounds. We have an, a lower card deck is what you see on the left and an upper card deck on the right. The lower card deck, you can tell, has pictures, it has some sky writing that happens, it has keywords listed. 
where here over on our upper card deck, you're seeing more basic kind of phonograms. And it's showing the sounds and the keyword and even these good rules at the back. And I know you, and I, or if you were like me, I was not, I don't remember any of these rules. So as a child, so growing, you know, getting to be a part of All Memphis and learning these rules makes you think like, oh, wow, I definitely need to kind of tune up a little bit. So those are awesome resources that we have that um, really work well for uh, students. Again, we're going to spend some time uh, just learning the sounds today and kind of figuring out how then can you give strategies at home to help your child decode unfamiliar words in a text. As we go through this, um, we're going to do it in kind of a, uh, a very routinized way. We are going to say the letter. So I'm going to sky write and say the letter name. I'm going to underline like this, the keyword, and I'm going to tap my throat for the sound. We're going to do that kind of together. I know at home you're going to be working on these very diligently, but here is kind of a rundown of how that would look. When you feel comfortable, please jump in and kind of do this along with me. But I'll start first. I'm going to trace the letter. So I'm going to say A, underline the keyword Apple, and say A, ah, just like that. Let's do it again. A, Apple, A, ah, T, Table. B, ball, B, L, lamp, L, F, fish, F, H, hat, H, P, pig, P, S, snake, S, U, up, uh, M, map, M, mm, R, rat, R, C, cat, K, G, goat, G, I, igloo, I. This one has a role. We prompt and we would say, what's the role? And students would respond back to us and say, no English word ends with I. Fun little fun thing for them to be able to recite back. S, H, ship, sh, N, nest, n, B, ball, oh, sorry, <laughs> D, dog, D, O, ox, Ah, uh, J, jar, j. No English word ends with a J. V, van, v. No English word ends with a V. It's always followed by an E. W, wagon, w. E, egg, e. Eh. X, box, X, K, kite, K, Y, yo-yo, Y, Z, zebra, Z, Q, U, queen, Qu, Q and U are always together because they are best friends. C, H, chair, ch. T, H, thumb. This one has a second sound. We do it like this. T, H, this, v. W, H, whistle, w. Those are all the sounds that we really work on in our lower card deck. And you can always refer back to those if needed. This is a quick rundown of how we say and how we should pronounce those sounds. And sometimes we get a little tricked up because they're different than maybe what you remember or how you would actually sound them out now. But just a quick little reminder for you.
In terms of rhyming, there are lots of games that you can play with your child to start getting that inner ear working in terms of phonological awareness. You can play an I spy game. I spy a word that rhymes with far. And the student would have to, your child would have to know, oh, that's car. You know, fun little things to get them going. Um, you can even do swirling is what I call it. On each hand, we'll say cat, at, at, hat, at, at. Another fun way to kind of get students to start hearing those rhyming words. And then we kind of look at segmenting. And segmenting is, is um, needed when a student comes or when your child comes to a word that they don't know. It's an unknown word. They don't know quite what to do with it when they get there. And we call that segmentation or breaking it apart, decoding that word. And there are a couple of ways that we can do that. You can do segmenting on your fingers like this. So if the word was crab, I could say k or ab, like that, four fingers. I can tap on my arm. I can say k or ab, just like that. Those sounds, that multi-sensory movement is really helpful for students when they're trying to figure out unknown parts. So let's take a look at a word in a text that a student might come across that they don't know. They can use the same decoding strategies we just talked about, either on their fingers or on their arm to help them segment that. And it can look like this. If a student comes to this, I would tell that student, my child, I would say, let's say the sounds in this word. The first sound, s, next sound, p, next sound, ah, uh, last sound, t. The word is what? Spot. That's a one way you can do it. But then there's a little bit more of a con, uh, a, a little bit more of a complicated way, but it helps them to really blend all these sounds together that can sometimes be really hard to put together, especially when there are um, beginning blends, beginning consonant blends in a word like SP in the word spot. This looks like this, though. You're saying each sound and then you're going to group them together. So it would say sp, sp, ah, spa, t, spot. Here's another example for you in this word. They come across and they don't know what it says. You can, again, break it apart on your hand. You can use your arm and you can use these types of decoding strategies as in ooh, uh, nch, four sounds in the word lunch. And then again, you can break it down even more as in ooh, uh, la, mm, lunch, lunch. Just a few ways that you can get your child to kind of work on those decoding strategies. All Memphis is available for um, any questions, supports. Uh, maybe you are a principal and you're watching this and you say, hey, I want that in my school. We would love to have that. Um, or if you are a parent really needing some supports on how to even engage your child in decoding strategies or getting them to understand sounds, um, you can visit our website at www.allmemphis.org or you can get on YouTube and just search in that top search bar, All Memphis, and you'll be able to see a wealth of videos that show different types of knowledge um, available for you um, that's accessible at your fingertips. And finally, you can reach me at hpetit, H-P-E-T-T-I-E-T-T-E -T -T -E -T -T -E, at allmemphis.org, or you can also email hello at allmemphis.org. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope that you were able to walk away with something very productive to use with your child at home. Thank you.